Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. How do you police the internet? Part one of our discussion, we talked about how the government since last week's attacks in Paris has been cracking down on uh, hate speech, particularly uh, over the web. Uh, we're going to look now a little bit more at uh, uh, what new measures can we do to monitor what's going on over the internet. With us, Nathalie Goudet. She chairs the French Senate's uh, Commission on Jihadist uh, Networks. Also joined again by human rights attorney Mougan Bijouet, uh, Etienne Drouard, intellectual property uh, lawyer. Some of the work you've done as well has involved things like the right to be forgotten in the, in the, in the case of Google. And uh, we're also joined uh, by uh, Fabrice Eppel Boin, who teaches at the French uh, Political Science Institute uh, Sciences Po. Now, uh, the prime minister, uh, when it comes to all of uh, this, uh, spelling out there's going to be new laws. Uh, he told Parliament Tuesday tougher laws to monitor the Internet will be unveiled in the coming days. An extraordinary situation requires extraordinary measures. But I stress that we should never let these exceptional measures undermine the principle of law and our values. All right, uh, exceptional measures. Nathalie Goulet, on that commission you chair. Yeah. Do you get the sense that you need new laws? Oh, no. Absolutely not. You've got what you need. Well, we got 14 uh, anti-terrorism law in less than 16 years. The last one, uh, the, the ink is not dry yet. So first, we have to improve this regulation. We need money, we need man, we need policemen, we need judge. Uh, we need a lot of things, but we no, don't need new regulation maybe except for uh, some uh, intelligence services which need more cooperation or more precise point. But really, we don't need any new regulation. You know, I open a hashtag, new, uh, no new law, just money. Etienne <laughs> Drouard, more means, more manpower, but, do they, but, are, uh, but is there a call in your view for new laws? Some will be adopted because I'm sure that uh, the political population will need something to be done and to, to show that an action has been taken. And I agree that we but don't But it's all smoke it. and mirrors? Um, I hope we could redress some situations where uh, administrative decisions for surveillance or wiretapping are now being able to be taken in France without any control except the authorization of a public, uh, um, a public officer alone without any publicity of his mm -hmm. decision. So we, we have this kind of... H hang on a sec. You're yes. saying that... Um, a uh, administrative decision can yeah. be made to wiretap without a judge. No. Yes, no. with a with with a public officer placed bef uh, close to the. When you say a public officer, you mean a police? No, um, um, civil servant. Public uh, civil servant uh, beside the the minister of the interior, who makes the decision. The control of this decision is just to see whether or not the right articles have been uh, viewed in, the, in, this, in this request for, uh, for surveillance by the right person for the right purposes, which would be just saying this is against terrorism. And then we don't have any more control of this. Decisions are made for two months. They may be renewed without any limitation. And this was adopted in November 2013. Uh, 2013. Decrease, decrees were expected for January 1st. Yeah, because in France, you, when you pass a bill, you then have to have to put details executive in another, yeah, decrees exactly. Exactly. That, are, that are published with it. So it was for January 1st. It's not really they were not published. Not yet. So we still don't have the law on the books, in fact. No, no. For a law adopted 12 or, or 14 months before, ago. So okay, so you'd like to see a judge or an investigating magistrate have a say when you decide to wiretap, do you expect listening to the prime minister and his speech on Tuesday that that's what's going to happen? Uh, I would expect not only me, but uh, the Euro European Convention on Human Rights, our constitution. But are you betting on it? Yeah. You think Daniel Valls will in involve magistrates in this? Because uh, the European legislation basing uh, and uh, used as a ground for these laws has been uh, rejected by the European Commission in March this year. So anyway, for European reasons or for French reasons, the French don't want to fall we will need of to European redraft law. it. Fabrice Epelboin, are you, are you optimistic on that score? I am not at all optimistic. Uh, my guess is that giving so much power, being able to put anything, anybody, 
under surveillance is such a power that the executive branch will take it and grasp it and use it. Uh, you can't give a candy to a child without expecting him to grab the candy and eat it. This is what we're doing with surveillance and the executive branch. We're deeply destabilizing the, the, the equilibrium between the executive branch, the parliamentary and justice. This is going to affect democracy big time and it could even get worse. We could head, give the executive branch in a future election to some extremist party and this will get really nasty. Nathalie Goulet, are the measures being talked about effectively giving a blank check mm. to uh, civil servants to the executive branch? No, no, we, we, we put up a frame, you know, we, we have a frame, we have a, a surveillance by a judge or from a administrative court or judiciary court. And then there is nothing regarding a comparison with a candy. I mean, it's a tool and some tool, we need them. But right now, what we don't need is a new law, because as we said previously, uh, the decret are not um, out yet and the law is not, uh, is not ready. It's as simple as that. So we don't need anything new as long as we don't have the previous law uh, ready for action. Mugambi Joué, at the end of the day, uh, will it be like with the Patriot Act in the United States? Does France need a, a, a French Patriot Act? I would uh, strongly advise uh, against uh, a form of Patriot Act for France uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, um, history suggests that these sort of dragnet uh, surveillance systems are not only violations of privacy and human rights, but also they are very ineffective in facing terrorism. Because but we, heard, we heard people say on Monday at the, when we were listening back to what was said at the march, some said, look, I'm ready to give up a little bit of freedom if it means being safe. Well, that may be the case for a number of uh, lay citizens, but uh, if we look at uh, the pros and cons of these laws, like I said, not only are they uh, violations of privacy, but they tend to generate so much information because dragnet surveillance systems, in fact, uh, generate too much information that's very hard to monitor. And uh, that's one reason why they are not a good system. And with regard to France, there were laws on the books uh, already, and the, the perpetrators of the, the terrorist attacks in Paris were already under surveillance, but there was not enough staff to focus on these individuals. Uh, furthermore, uh, they have to be other methods to tackle the roots of the problem, not simply a responsive uh, um, measures against terrorism, but also attacking the roots of the problems, which would include sociological issues and geopolitical issues. All right, but, but let me ask you, Fabrice Pelbois, this, this issue of mass surveillance and what they call, I guess, is, they call it metadata? We're not when, yet into mass surveillance. What we're, where we're headed haven't, right haven't, now. Haven't intelligence services gotten better at it since Yeah, 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 we're, we're getting better, but still uh, mass surveillance is not made to fight terrorism. It's not designed for that. It's made to fight any form of social unrest, anything. For example, the best software there is to gather all these metadata and everything is called Palantir. Palantir is used by the Indian government to fight the uh, Maoist uh, guerrilla. Nothing to do with terrorism. It's, it's but it could used, be used for Yeah, why not? It, could be used. it also could be used to fight any forms of political op uh, opposition. It might be used to, fight, to, to um, use this way. It has been used in the past, in the 80s, by a social, another socialist government to spy on political opposition. It's a French history of doing this. Nathalie Goulet, what do your voters tell you in your home district in Normandy? Right now they're scared. Uh, but uh, they, they understand the magnitude of the problem. And, uh, you know, the, the smallest uh, uh, city, the smallest town of my constituency last week, 22 people are living there. You know, it's really like a confetti, you know. Um, they, they put on the, on the city hall, let's say, uh, a, a big uh, I am Charlie. You know, they, they feel very concerned about that. And what I would like to, to say that uh, Patriot Act didn't prevent any Boston attack. Uh, Patriot Act didn't prevent anything. And then Americans are really um, very guilty for what happened in, uh, in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, and all over and become rogue states instead of state of law. So um, regarding Patriot Act... Uh, and do you think lawmakers agree with you that they're wary of what happened with the Patriot Act? 
Well, it de depends what they are, what they are fishing as, uh, as ballots. But um, for one thing is sure, regarding the Patriot Act, and you never speak about that, it's the monetary, the financial network. And regarding the financial network, the Patriot Act is really interesting because you have to follow the money too. And that is a good aspect of the problem, and it's a good way to fight terrorism, is to follow the money. And Patriot Act is really efficient on this matter. In fact, technology may be efficient. But for me, efficiency doesn't mean only to find the information, but also which information to collect before. On any kind of people, on the whole population, because maybe among us we have terrorists. No, the answer is we should be sure to target the right person. And for that, we need control. It's not a matter of technical efficiency. It's a matter of democracy, in fact. One of the pitfalls of the Patriot Act in the United States is that once you give the government so much leeway to conduct surveillance, it becomes very hard to withdraw that power from the government because anyone who's going to argue against these measures will be called soft on terrorism. And once a country takes that route, the road is very difficult to uh, go back. All right. Part one of our discussion, Fabrice uh, uh, Epelboin was mentioning how um, uh, part of the problem for the French is they're playing by American rules. Uh, that's certainly uh, the case when you take a look at uh, uh, getting the big internet giants like Google and Facebook to uh, uh, agree with you to hand over a lot of that data. The head of Google France uh, told uh, partner station uh, France 2 uh, that uh, the internet giants already cooperating. At Google, we've already got a policy concerning YouTube and the sort of content that we want to have on our sites. In the policy that's already in place, there are many things that are designated as unacceptable. But there are also instances where there is, for example, some illegal content. And there the police will ask us to take it down. Over the weekend, we received several such requests and we took the videos down as quickly as possible took the videos down as quickly as possible. How much do the likes of Google, Facebook and others cooperate? Oh, as much as they can and to the point where they will consider that there is not much difference between Iran and France because both have freedom of speech, very restricted by their local law. And both will ask for censorship on this topic and this topic and this topic. And at one point, it's going to be difficult because if we have content, let's say terrorist content, popping all over the place, they'll be surrounded by content labeled as terrorist and they won't be effective to, to put them down. Uh, this is a fight. Uh, Zin Ben Ali, the former dictatorship of Tunisia, fought against his own population and he lost. Uh, we have to find another way to grasp the problem. It's a real serious problem. Because I'm, I'm asking the question because David Cameron's at the White House this Thursday and uh, top, top of the agenda is uh, convincing Barack Obama to get uh, those U.S. tech giants to agree more. Yeah, except that he has a very different uh, view on free speech in the U.K. than we have. Uh, the, the UK view of, on free speech is very close to the American view. We have a very specific view of free speech, and we have a very specific problem So what's David Cameron censorship. asking for in that case? Cameron is uh, just asking to uh, end any kind of privacy on the Internet by, um, uh, by uh, forcing people not to use encryption, uh, and that's a very different problem. It can difficultly, it can't work because basically you need encryption to connect to your bank, you need encryption for many privacy related stuff, uh, you need encryption if you're a lawyer, you need encryption if you're a journalist, you need encryption for many, many jobs. So this law is just going to be one another stupid law. Uh, Cameron is gaining cooperation and better cooperation. He, he would like to be to to have the same means and powers and, and partnership as the NSA had to execute with these U.S. giants, and this is effectively what they need, in fact, and what we would all need. We not we don't need more legal cooperation. We need more technical um, um, capacities and cooperation, and it comes from the U.S. government or from the U.S. giants. And Cameron is doing the right diplomatic uh, uh, journey 
in this, uh, not only for the law it will, it will enact or not in the, in, in the UK and, and in France, we don't care what it, what it will enact. But this cooperation initiative is very good for soft cooperation on software, encryption, etc. So it, may, it will make it more efficient so that they may have... So there'll be bilateral agreements on what's encrypted and what's not? And we don't know if it will be even published. But this, this kind of cooperation is, uh, is the key point for efficiency, technical efficiency. It doesn't, it doesn't preclude on the legal debate. So, Nathalie Goulet, if uh, all these tech giants are in the U.S., if we're, the world play, goes on the Internet by American rules, should the French government be sending the prime minister or the president cap in hand to Washington? In fact, uh, Bernard Cazeneuve just announced this afternoon. The interior minister. Yes, Interior Minister in, uh, announced this afternoon in the Senate that he will travel uh, beginning of February to the state to discuss with the major Google and everybody about a kind of memorandum of understanding, but uh, about the content. Uh, if they can redraw some content by themselves, because they are too violent or too uh, against the law, maybe it will be also a way to work. But he, he already announced that this afternoon. What's the conclusion you draw in terms of if you want to fight in, in the fight against, uh, against terror? Conclusion, I mean, we are just starting the process. My, my only and single conclusion is that we, we need money and we need men and we need policemen and we, need, uh, we have enough law. I, I'm sorry to repeat it again and again, but uh, uh, Internet will not be the solution. I was in London two weeks ago for this new bill, uh, which is also uh, very uh, uh, tough regarding the IP. And um, it's it's absolutely um, the internet uh, protocol, just like uh, the internet protocol. For each yeah, computer. but but it's it's um, it's just a, a, a past theory because IP is not useful anymore because you don't you cannot identify people with IP. It's not no. useful anymore. So you know it's 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 just old fashioned way to think about that. So you know it, it's better to dis anyway. It's better to discuss with the people than to stay abroad and then to try to understand because all those people are not used to this. Uh, a technical point, and we have to discuss and to, to learn about that to, to be able to, to uh, act. Mogami Jouet, we're, we're talking what, what's still an emotional moment here in France. It's still an active investigation in the case uh, 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 of, uh, of what happened. Of, uh, as a result of this, do you see bad laws being passed in haste? That's certainly a danger. Uh, in times of crises, uh, the public can be persuaded by politicians to take laws that are draconian, that, are, uh, that go too far in violating civil liberties in the name of security. And uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these events have been dubbed the 9-11 of France. But it's a di big difference with 9-11 in the U.S., which is that all the, hi all the hijackers that were responsible for the 9-11 attacks in the U.S., were foreign citizens, whereas uh, the recent perpetrators of the attacks in Paris were all French citizens. And the root of the problem is the radicalization of wayward French youths uh, who do not feel like they belong in French society. And unless uh, this root of the problem is tackled, um, all the other measures that we've talked about, such as uh, uh, repressing free speech or increasing government, government, government surveillance, when already there are a lot of laws in the books, are not going to resolve the problem. And do you agree with uh, Senator Goulet that... Uh what you need is more manpower and, and more police, and that there should be more surveillance. Uh, absolutely. In general, it's important to keep in mind that in times of crises, uh, politicians feel a lot of pressure not only to act, but to seem as if they are acting. And one of their arguments is that there are not enough laws in the books to tackle terrorists, but there are many laws in the books. And it's a broader question of whether the French intelligence services are working competently or whether they are understaffed, and even whether they were able to generate a broad ra broader range of surveillance, whether that would be helpful, because then they would possibly generate so much information that would be, it would be even harder for them to monitor all the suspects. Before we go, uh, there's the question of how wide a threat is it right now? Um, this uh, dispatch from the Associated Press saying that hackers have targeted some 19,000 French websites since uh, since last week. But tell us, what put that in perspective for us. Fabrice Appelbois, is that just a normal week? Well, we're talking about very low-end hacking. That's the equivalent of writing an insult on the, the city hall uh, entrance. 
It's like putting a graffiti on a wall. It's nothing really bad, but it's a signal. It's a signal that there are many, many people uh, on the cyberspace that are protesting. It's a form of protest, and we shouldn't take this any um, anywhere else than a form of protest. It could escalate into something worse, but so far this is just protest going on in the cyber street. So what should be the government's reaction? Nothing. The, the only reaction to that is that people who have websites should take sec uh, IT security seriously. It hasn't been done so far. There is lots, lots of work to, be do, to, to, to have on IT security. If you have a website, it's your responsibility to make it secure. And so far, since it's not visible, uh, securing a website isn't visible until something like that happened. But there's nothing to be done except telling people, hey, you're not in a peaceful place. You're not on a peaceful planet. And if you live on the first floor, you should have some uh, curtains to protect uh, the entry of your door. All right. So, so keep calm and build a firewall. That's the, the advice from uh, Fabrice Pelbois. I want to thank you. I want to thank Nathalie Goulet. I also want to thank uh, Mougan Bijouet and Etienne Drouin. Stay with us. James Creedon is next. It's our Media Watch segment. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, so, uh, a look at how we've been, how the uh, British press in particular has been reacting and uh, French social media to Sky News versus uh, France's interpretation, I suppose, oh, I know of where you're going freedom of expression. This. Caroline Forrest, it is. Uh, she was a guest here in our studio just yesterday. Well, there you go. And she, a former journalist at Charlie Hebdo, a, a feminist journalist who is uh, very much in favour of. Uh, a, 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 a strong um, interpretation, I suppose, or a, a, of the, the whole notion of freedom of press and freedom of expression. Uh, and Sky News uh, cut her off very, very quickly uh, when she attempted to um, show the front page of Charlie Hebdo, which, of course, everybody was running out to buy yesterday. It sold like hotcakes. And that is, uh, I suppose, an image of how far she got on Sky News before the camera was quickly returned. Uh, to studio and she quickly uh, took to social media to say that she was cut off uh, live on air and that this is a, a, an offence to intelligence. Now what she was actually saying on air before we get to the different reactions to this is uh, that she was sad that journalists in the UK uh, did not support uh, uh, us, that, uh, that they had betrayed what journalism is about uh, by thinking that people cannot be grown up enough to decide if a drawing is offensive or not, uh, because you're not even showing it. So her point of view is you should be allowed to see the drawing to make up your own mind as an independent, grown-up person as to whether or not it is offensive in a free society. Now, it's uh, it's interesting because if you go back to 2005 when the conservative Danish daily Gilans Posten published 12 caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad, um, very few, and there was, there was no media, in fact, in the UK that republished those cartoons mm. at the time. So this, it's not new that British media um, have a, a different position to, I suppose, French media in this, uh, in this regard. Uh, but uh, let's just take a look at how, that's an unrelated issue, but uh, there's, there, there is that image again on social media. Um, uh, she also did this, by the way, in, in, in 2008, on CNN, so she takes quite, I suppose, an activist role in, in uh, imposing uh, images uh, that uh, certain editorial uh, staff have decided won't be broadcast on their airways. For, from her point of view, this is about freedom and uh, it is a, an activist uh, attitude. Sky News is, je suis un coward, I am a coward. So they're playing on the whole, je suis Charlie or I am Charlie meme. So it's a cowardly decision uh, for some. Others are saying, vive Caroline Forrest for uh, defending uh, her interpretation of uh, freedom of uh, the expression and freedom of the media. Censoring the legitimate criticism of religion is asking for obedience, not respect, says Pierre uh, Renault. And um, a huge respect to Sky News, such a responsible act, uh, says uh, this other uh, Twitter user. Oh, so, uh, so viewers divided. Uh, very much divided. And it seems to come down uh, each time to the whole notion of uh, freedom of expression, freedom of the press versus respect. Do you take a hardline approach when it comes to freedom of expression? And uh, I think the attitude is if you seed on any one principle of this, 
where is it going to end? Where is that going to stop? Uh, whereas others will say it's, it's more a, a, a matter of, OK, you have a certain principle, but what about being a little bit respectful about that principle and not rubbing it in people's faces? It's one thing to publish it, but what about reprinting it? And I think it's interesting. I think what informs a lot of this debate in France is context, which is often missed, missed overseas. What was on the front cover of Charlie Hebdo, The Week of the Attack? Michel Welbeck, a French writer, award-winning writer, his latest book is called Submission, and it imagines a France in 2022 which has a moderately Muslim president. So I think there is this notion, and that plays into a general, I think, fear in France, that if you start to cede, that there will be something which is known as uh, le grand remplacement, the, a great replacement, which has been much criticised. It's a philosophical view expressed by the far right that little by little by little, France's population is going to be replaced. So I think... Uh, hardline defenders of laïcité will say you cannot cede one inch because other, if you start to do that, uh, we're going to start, uh, what would you say, uh, compromising our values, French values. All right, so the, the whole world getting, uh, I guess, involved or look into uh, a very French argument. James Creedon, many thanks uh, for that. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.